Hey folks, welcome to Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And today, games within games within D&D games. Let the games begin. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with us. You know what's missing from D&D games a lot of times, Ted? Is that games? <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> Entertainment. I know we said games in the beginning, but, you know, games are a form of entertainment. And I feel like, you know, whether you're talking about performances like the gladiatorial arena, which is a type of games, or sporting events, which are, again, a type of games, or maybe we're just talking about theater. That's, that's true. And, like, while there's some things that can be done with, like, basic skill checks or, you know, like the gladiatorial thing that would just be extra combat... There, there should be ways to say, okay, well, how can you have an expedited combat happen if the players are the spectators, but you still want to have that random element to what actually happens? So really what, we're, what you're kind of talking about, too, is how do you take, how do you take the three pillars of D&D? We've got combat, social interaction... And exploration. We could take these and we can fold them right into this concept of entertainment and run different kinds of D&D games where instead of going out and slaying monsters, yeah, maybe maybe the adventure is around gladiatorial uh, arenas and combats. And, you know, almost like think about like uh, wrestling, right? Modern day wrestling and, you know, the production that goes into that. Why couldn't you do the same thing? Like what if what if the gladiatorial combats are fake? What if they're not real? What if they're, you know, they're kind of theater productions and but people think they're real and it's kind of like the job of of the combatants to make people think it's real or sometimes they get out of control or there's a slippage or, or you know or something happens like that could be a part of it there could be gambling and politics and all this stuff that goes behind seat goes all behind scenes well you you got the whole you know charisma angle of what's going on like okay i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna deliver this speech to to prove to you why I'm the better contender here, and you play up, you know, you ham it for the crowd, just as you see with, you know, the, this wrestling. And technically, there's always going to be sponsors to those those guys. So the people who are going like, to boost that guy up and give him, you know, or gal, give them the, the better chance to succeed. But, you know, behind the scenes, these guys that are going to be fighting, you know, they're fast friends and they're going to sit and work on their moves of, hey, you know, I want to try this and I want to stage that. And they have a lot of fun to put on a show as entertainment. Well, and also think about like the, a Coliseum. Maybe they're set up almost like, you know, more like modern day stadiums where you have like the VIP sections and you have different ones and people from different dignitaries, different nobles are in different things. So like, you know, part of an adventure could be, okay, there's the gladiatorial combat going on in the background, right? Players could be gambling on it. They may know people in there. They may, some of those NPCs might be important to them, but their objective is really to get into these political intrigues with the other, the other guests, you know, these well-to-do nobles and maybe ambassadors from other nations. And the only place they're going to get access is at one of these sporting events, you know, and it doesn't have to be gladiatorial combat. We're just using that. You know, what if you have your version of Blood Bowl going on? You know, we had Etherball in, you know, one of the games that we played. We've I've also done uh, Rat Ball in one of the games I've done. And I've heard of other people making up their own kind of sporting events where it just adds something different. And I can tell you, I can tell you for sure, I don't think my players seen it coming when I threw an adventure at them where they ended up playing in a game of Rat Ball <laughs> and representing one of the sides of kobolds that that was you know pretty amusing it was one of those things that you're right we didn't see it coming and we got to see oh well how do i play this how do i do that so having having a rule set to one of these things makes that makes the world that you're playing in that much more fun and that much more real and, and not only that it's not just about having you know, like a sporting event or, or a game, but it's about how does that tie into your world? What is this going to mean to, you know, to the world itself? In this particular instance, there was warring kobold tribes and they settled their disputes by playing a sporting event, right? And then there was like all this pomp and circumstance that went 
building up to the event and then after it you know it ends in a parade where they they march you know to a like a sacred place for the kobolds and one of the sides gets sacrificed to their god <laughs> but you know hey it, it, it all works it all adds to the adventure you get to tell a different kind of story you know the same thing like if you do theater houses right it could be all about the production and maybe you have rival theater houses and rival play troops and things of this nature where they're like warring with each other almost like street gangs vying for the attention of the people that matter. Well, not only could you have the rivals of different theater gangs, uh, you know, I use the term gang loosely, uh, but you could have rivals within a theater itself. I mean, if you look at how how cutthroat uh, stage acting and stage performing is, um, you know, if you uh, this might not this might be outside of your wheelhouse who knows but if you look at the movie Black Swan where they focus on ballet and how some of these dancers are very much against one another but yet they still have to go up and perform beautifully next to each other but they all want that prize star role uh, and and that's the way it is in a lot of different you know troops you know you know theater theater notwithstanding so i know there's a there's a section in game of thrones where the one uh the one person wants that star role and like they hire you know the the many-faced god to take her out these things can <laughs> happen but you know what before we go into other games and just in case you lose your shirt in a game nerdarchy's got you covered with all these shirts from nerdarchy many colors and many to choose from besides you know theater and you know stage and and gladiatorial combat like they have concepts of games that you can get in the player's handbook you know, three three dragon ante, dragon chess, and a dice set, but there's no actual rules for what you can you can do with them. So you could make up your own games and possibly some you know quick simple rules. Yeah, it might not be enough of like this is a thrilling game to play outside of D and D, but to have some some rules that you can play around with for an actual game you might be able to get your your players heavily invested because now they're applying their D&D skills to, you know, these dice rolls and, and have a lot of fun with it. Now, I do find that players really do seem to enjoy when you when they can gamble and where they have to do dice offs, you know, even if it's just representing the card game or whatever they're mm -hmm. playing. I think players get excited about that and they have a lot of fun with it. But then you can tell stories around these gambling houses and halls uh, you know, where, you know, maybe people are cheating and they don't know how they're cheating. So you're, you're, you're hired as an outside contractor to like solve this riddle and, you know, watch the gaming hall. Like you're almost like become like pit bosses. Right. And, you know, and you've been low, you've been hired, hired by a local or maybe someone's been wrongfully accused of cheating. And they're in a they're in a bind, so you have to infiltrate one of these gambling houses and try and get them out or get their stuff back, or any number of things an NPC might hire you for. But it just enriches and adds to the game. And if you watch like Critical Role, uh, Matt Mercer has introduced quite a few gambling games into his, into his games, and you know those players seem to really enjoy it. At the times that I've done it in the past, my I think my players enjoyed it. You know, as nerds, we just like to roll dice, and when those <laughs> rolling those dice can mean something, it's a lot of fun. And then, like you said, right, you have certain game sets that's on your character and they're proficient with, or maybe they have sleight of hand, you know, or deception. Well, they can then maybe use these other skills to try and cheat. So, so like if if you have an actual rule set of how you play this game, you should have rules of, well, how do you incorporate deception? How do you incorporate sleight of hand? And these should be worked into the mechanics so that they work precisely with this game that we're all, that we're all playing. Um, and the same could be said for uh, a variety of different opposed roles, whether you're playing you know, some kind of, you know, puzzle game or even you know an arm wrestling contest drinking contest these are just standard opposed roles you know you know either a stat or a skill and you're doing roll offs but if you have ways of okay well i'm going to you know i'm going to twist my arm just just thusly it's not enough to make me win but it's enough to give me an advantage you know these these things you know might be cheating or it might just be you know a more conceptualized set of rules Right. Uh, and, you know, 
like like you said, like these could be interesting centerpieces for your game, even like if it's not the whole adventure, but it's just a piece you roll out and go, oh, well, this could be an interesting place for a conflict to happen. You know, kind of like the movie Black Panther, where they, you know, they had that fight scene that takes place in the casino. Or you, could, you could take scenes like that, or you can look at any of maybe the different uh, movies, novels, uh, TV shows that you that you've uh, watched, read over the years, and you can take that knowledge and fold it right into your game, and maybe you know maybe you'll find some plots and some storylines that you weren't thinking that you would use before. It'd be an interesting place uh, to get inspiration from. That's going to be a way for you to introduce, as you said, new plot hooks, but new NPCs. It's a way to engage the 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 player characters that are not combat focused and you know if, if you're looking for ways to make those uh, social characters and those skill heavy characters that might be invested in, in this kind of an angle this is a way to, to have a lot of fun with it could also be a diversion from your typical combat heavy game of like you know what tonight we're just going to have a party there's gambling there's drinking there's these contests and it's all about the party so all of this could be done in that kind of setting if it's the right kind of party. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're going to focus on the the, the two other pillars of D&D, which are exploration and social interaction. I feel like a lot of games get social interaction in, but exploration, not as much. And it doesn't always have to happen in the wilderness. That is true. It could happen in the city or a town. But the question is, guys, are you playing games in your D&D game? Is there entertainment? We've got a place where we can talk about it. You can tell us all about it. That is down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can check out the store over on nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.